am thirsty. Please come and fill me. Use me that others might see. The power you're giving to one who is willing to be what you'd have me be. Lord, I am thirsty. I taste it. filled with sin
Welcome to our Sunday evening service. We're going to begin with hymn, four, hymn number 473. Hymn number 473, Heaven Came Down, Glory Filled My Soul. Hymn number 473. Life 
from above into God's family divine. Justified freely through Calvary's love, oh, what a standing is mine. And the transaction so quickly was made when as a sinner I came. Took of the offer of grace, he did proffer, he saved me, all oh, praise his dear name. Heaven came down and glory filled my soul. When at the cross the Savior made me whole, my sins were Again, Lord, we thank you for this evening. We thank you for the glory we have from above we can find in the Lord Jesus Christ. We thank you for his love and his precious promises. I pray at this time that you just work in our midst and do that work which you can only do. And during this live stream, for those who are watching, will you just do a special work in their heart this evening? Lord, I pray you'd help us keep our eyes focused on you and you alone. Lord, I pray if there is someone who's watching, Lord, they, they know they're a sinner, they know that Jesus died for them, but yet they have never accepted that precious gift. I pray that tonight will be that night. And Lord, for those who know you already, Lord, strengthen them in their faith, help them be bold for the Lord Jesus Christ, and Lord, help them to live for you, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Next song we'll be singing in just a moment is hymn number 274. Hymn number 274, Jesus Never Fails. Hymn number 274. Earthly friends may prove untrue, doubts and fears assail, but Jesus never fails. Start. 
this time it's usually we take up our offering but this evening we're just going to listen to a special and you listen to it as April plays for this normally what would be this evening's offering at this time Thank you for that spe special April. We're going to be singing hymn number 308, hymn number 308, Higher Ground, I'm Pressing on the Upward Way, New Heights I'm Gaining Every Day, hymn number 308. Some may dwell where those abound. My prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. My feet on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on Yeah. 
we'll sing one more song just before the message, hymn number 297. Hymn number 297, God will take care of you. Hymn number 297. Be not dismayed, whatever be tired, God will take care of you. Thank you so much, Brother Marr, for leading those wonderful hymns. Let's take our Bibles together if we could. And uh, we're going to read uh, some scripture uh, as we consider the latter end. If we could turn to 2 Peter chapter 2 in our Bible, 2 Peter chapter 2. And I will ask you if you could pray uh, for pastors all over our country as they serve the Lord. I know that uh, they government's concerned, um, classified as the essential workers, but they are essential servants, and uh, they're serving the Lord and ministering where they can, and, and so pray for them during this time as they make decisions and, and serve the Lord and, and, uh, and uh, give uh, glory to God as they serve Him, and so remember to pray uh, for uh, pastors uh, all over this country as they preach the gospel. Second Peter chapter 2, we have a, a long passage of scripture tonight. But I want us to kind of just give a thought and, and then we'll, we'll move forward with our message. I'll move this microphone out of the way. We don't really need it. Second Peter chapter 2 and we'll look at verse number 1 together. Second Peter chapter 2 and verse number 1. The Bible says, but there were false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift, swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways, 
by reason of whom the truth, the way of the truth, shall be even evil spoken of. And through covetousness shall they with feign words make merchandise of you, whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. Be careful of those uh, teachers, preachers, false teachers. Be careful of those who would um, not be so, uh, how can I say this? They're not so much concerned about a ministry as much as they are an industry. And they're trying to make money and, and trying to make money off the idea of God and, and who God is. And, and just be careful of these people who try to make merchandise of you. Uh, whose judge now of a long time lingereth not and their damnation slumbereth not. Verse 4 here. The Bible says, For if God spare not the angels that sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them in, unto, uh, into uh, chains of darkness to be reserved unto judgment. And spare not the old world, uh, but save Noah the eighth person, a preacher of righteousness, bringing in the flood upon the world of the ungodly. And turning the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes, condemned them with an overthrow, making them an ensample unto those that after should live ungodly. And delivered just Lot, vexed with the filthy conversation of the wicked. For that righteous man, dwelling among them and seeing and hearing, vexed his righteous soul from day to day with their unlawful deeds. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations, and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh uh, in the lust of uncleanness, and despise government. Presumptuous are they, self-willed, they are not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries. Whereas angels, which are greater in power and might, bring not railing accusation against them before the Lord. But these, as natural brute beasts, made to be taken and destroyed, speak evil of the things that they understand not, and shall utterly perish in their own corruption." And shall receive the reward of unrighteousness as they that counted pleasure to riot in the daytime. Spots they are and blemishes, sporting themselves with their own um, deceivings while they feast with you. Having eyes full of adultery that cannot cease from sin, beguiling unstable souls. And heart they have exercised with covetous practices, cursed children, which have forsaken the right way. Now remember... These are false teachers that are leading God's people astray with their false teaching and their, and their heresies. And the Bible says that they had forsaken the right way. They were given the right way. They were given opportunity to follow the right way. But they have, for, they have forsaken the right way. The Bible says, verse 15, And have gone astray, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar, who loved the wages of unrighteousness or the pleasures of sin for a season, but was rebuked for his iniquity. The dumbass speaking with man's voice forbade the madness of the prophet. These are wells without water, clouds that are carried with a tempest, to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantingness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Uh, while they promised them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein and overcome. The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. For it had been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than after they have known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. But it has happened unto them according to the true proverb, the dog is turned to his own vomit again, and the sow that was washed to her wallowing in the mire. I want us, if we could tonight, to look at verse number 20. And I want us to think of this expression in verse 20. The Bible says the latter end, the latter end. The apostates had filled the church 
And they were teaching their heresies and false, teach, uh, false teaching. And they were leading God's people astray. And here the message of the Holy Spirit is, those who had made a profession that they knew the Lord, but really had just began a process of, of reformation or outward change. They, they had walked the walk of a, of a Christian, if I could say, but they had no inward transformation. And the Holy Spirit says that someone who tries to act like a Christian and someone who tries to reform themselves from the outside and, and try to, you know, we, we use this, or the world uses this expression, you know, find the, the better you or, or, you know, kind of deep, look deep down and, and find a better version of yourself. You know, they, they, they try to better themselves by, by outward effort. The Bible says that they're just going to return in the latter end to their nature. And this is what was happening in the churches. And this is what was breaking the heart of the Holy Spirit as he's warning God's people to be careful of these, these false teachers that are making merchandise of God's people and leading them astray. And the warning in the Bible is that destruction will come. And so I want us to think about the latter end for just a moment in our Christian life and what the Bible says about the latter end and how we, as we run our race in our life, how we can keep our eyes on, you know, the goal at the end to make sure that we can finish strong. Let's take a moment and talk to our Lord if we could tonight. Our, our Heavenly Father, we're grateful for all that you've done for us and and Lord, we're thankful for your blessings. We're thankful for the opportunity we have to look at your word and to understand uh, these simple Bible truths, Lord, to help us to succeed and to bring you glory with the life we live. Uh, Lord, I pray you would give clarity of thought to each of us as we look at your word. Hide me behind the cross. Give me the words to say. And may you be glorified. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, I don't know if you've ever run a race. Uh, in high school, I was into running. Uh, I really enjoyed running short races. I would run the 50, uh, the 100 meter. I never really got into long distance, uh, long distance racing. Um, with long distance racing, you, you have to you have to be planning and looking at the procedure of racing uh, if you are going to find success. You can't just run as fast as you can at the beginning of the race and, and hope you're going to have enough gas at the end. I mean, the reality is if that is what you're going to do, when you get to the end of the race or close to the end of the race, you're not going to have enough energy to finish strong. And so you have to pace yourself. There, there's planning involved. There's a, a particular procedure uh, in, involved in long distance racing. Now, the Bible teaches us that as we are running the race set before us, we are in a marathon in the Christian life. And we're not racing against other Christians. We are racing to bring honor and glory to the Lord. We're in a race and, and our goal is Jesus. Our goal is to be like Jesus. Our goal is to bring glory to Jesus. And as we are in this marathon, we need to have proper procedure and proper planning if we are going to bring glory to God in the latter end. And, and, and the Bible teaches us as Christians that we must consider the latter end. The Bible says in Proverbs 14 verse 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. So the Bible teaches us that in the latter end, though they say they're on the right path and though they say they are doing good, the, the latter end or the end will determine uh, the direction of their life. Proverbs 25 verse 8 says, Go not forth hastily to strive, lest thou know not what to do in the end thereof. Ecclesiastes 7 uh, uh, chapter 7 verse 8 says, Better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. 
In fact, it was Jeremiah the prophet who wrote and uh, who was speaking to uh, the false teachers of the day and to the children of Israel and said, you know what, the prophets prophesied falsely and the priests bear rule by their means and my people love to have it so, but what shall ye do in the end thereof? Consider the end is what the Bible says. So the Bible principle that we find throughout scripture is to pause and take a moment and consider the end of a thing. Consider your pathway. Consider your direction. Because your direction always has a destination. And, and we are, as Christians, we have biblical wisdom. So we are to compare our direction with what the Bible says. And we can see through scripture our destination. Now, if we look at our text... Uh, here, the Bible says in verse 15, uh, the Bible says that they had forsaken the right way. These are these false teachers. And they have gone astray. They have gone their own way, following the way of Balaam, the son of Bozar. Now, the way of Balaam was a way, a pathway in which someone lived according to the pleasures of their own flesh. They lived their life to satisfy their own flesh and to, to satisfy uh, their own uh, uh, carnal appetite. And yet the Bible says that their pathway had a destination. So let's think about that for just a moment. Our direction in life will have a destination. And our destination for Christians, our goal ought to be, I want to bring glory to God. I want to honor the Lord. I want to finish strong. That ought to be our desire. So I want to give you some biblical principles about the latter end and how we can finish strong as a Christian. Number one, would you write it down? You're at home, you're watching this live stream. I hope you have your Bible uh, nearby and uh, maybe a pen and some paper. You can write this down. You can read over these verses later and, and pray about it and ask God how you can use this in your life every day. Number one, heed the warning of the Bible. Heed the warning of the Bible. 2 Peter 1 verse 19 says this, We have also a more sh a short word of prophecy, whereunto ye do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in the dark place until the day dawn, and the day star arise in our hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. So, you know, people will say this, well, I think the Bible means this. And someone will say, well, that's what the Bible means for you, but the Bible for me means this. No, the Bible is of no private interpretation. God meant what he wrote, and he wrote what he meant, and, and truth is truth, and it's not different for different people. Uh, it's of no private interpretation, the Bible says. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man. It wasn't orchestrated by man or, you know, the... Uh, uh, a plan of humanity. Uh, no, no person, no, the will of man cannot create a book so wonderful. But holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Spirit directed them what to write. In other words, the Bible is the word of God. Now we got to settle that right now. The Bible is the word of God. Now let's say this. Let's say God came to you tonight. And uh, God said, listen, I want to talk to you. I, I want to show you the direction you're heading in your life. This is your direction. This is where you're heading. And if you keep on going in this direction, this is going to be the destination. And God is correcting you. He's rebuking you. He's telling you, listen, don't go this way. This is going to hurt you. This is going to hurt others. If you keep on following after your own desire, your own pathway, this is going to be your, your destination. If God came to you tonight and, and he... Uh, showed you these things, would you change your direction? I want to submit to you that you would. You would immediately change the direction of your life. Listen, God has come to us. He has sent us a message in his word. The Bible is the message of God. And the Bible teaches us the direction of our life and guides us in the direction of our life to, to really save us a lot of heartache. And a lot of hurt. And, and, and the Bible says in the scripture we, we just read. That 
it would be important for us, or we would do well, if we heeded the Bible. If we listened to what the Bible had to say. The Bible says in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. The Bible is given to us to help us, to uh, reprove us, to correct us, and to instruct us. And it is profitable for us to listen to what the Bible has to say. You know, over my years of, of, of serving, and, and I'm coming up to, I think, 10 years of pastoring uh, here at Kitchener Baptist Church, I had several, several people come into my office and was in a lot of trouble and, and, and was in a mess in their life. And, and every single time, you know, I sat down and counseled with them and, and tried to help them. It all came down to a time in their life where they decided to disobey God. Where they decided to go their own way. Where they decided to do their own thing. And, and now they were reaping uh, what they have sown in their life. And the Bible warns us about this. It says, don't do that. It says, don't go there. Follow the Bible. Listen to the warnings of Scripture. You do well. It says, flee youthful lusts, but follow righteousness, faith, and charity. It says, but thou, O man of God, flee these things. And follow after righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and meekness. We do well to follow the Bible. Number two. You can write this down, number two. Remember, we don't live unto ourselves. The decisions that I make are not only going to affect me, they're going to affect my family. They're going to affect this church. You, you know, I, I, I think about that all of the time, you know. Before I post something on Facebook, I remember, hey, what I put on Facebook is not just going to affect me. It's going to affect others. It's going to affect my testimony. It's going to affect the testimony of the Lord. It, it's, going to te uh, it's going to affect or, or change people's opinion of, of the Lord. And, and so I'm careful. I'm careful of how I act. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, I'm not going to read the whole scripture, but the argument in this passage of scripture are, are those that were eating meat, that were offered unto idols. And, and here the Apostle Paul says to the church, listen, you have liberty to do what you want to do. I understand an idol is nothing. It has no power. It has no ability. We know that an idol is nothing. That there's no such thing. There's only one God. Paul says I understand that. And you have liberty to, to choose and to make your choices. But he says listen. Your decision is going to impact other people. And so when we make decisions, we need to think about the best interest of others. Think about others and how it's going to impact their life. When I make a decision and I follow a direction in my life, how is that going to impact my family? How is that going to impact others around me? You know, we do not live unto ourselves. The Bible says in Romans 14, verse number 7, For none of us liveth to himself, and no one dieth to himself. I think of the example of David. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, Nathan comes unto David, and he gives to him uh, an illustration. He says, David, I want to tell you a story. There was a rich man that had exceeding many flocks and herds. There was a rich man that, that had a, a great multitude of, of sheep and, and, and lambs and, and just a great flock. And there was a poor man who had nothing. And he only had a ewe lamb, just a, a little ewe lamb, a baby lamb. And he brought that lamb up and he nourished it. And it grew up together with him and with his children. He did eat his own meat. He drank of his own cup. He lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. I mean, it's kind of like how people treat dogs today. I, I mean, it was just like his own child. He loved this ewe lamb. And the Bible says in verse 4 that a traveler came unto the rich man. 
And instead of the rich man taking his multitude of, of herd that he had, flock that he had, sheep and lambs and ewe lambs, he had all of it. Instead of taking of his own, he went over to that poor man and he took that, that ewe lamb. The ewe lamb in, in which that poor man loved and cherished and treated it like his own child. And he slaughtered that ewe lamb and he gave it to the traveler. And immediately David said, that man has to die. And he's going to pay back, he's going to pay back fourfold of what he, what he has taken from that, that poor man. And Nathan, the prophet, said to David, David, you are the man. Because the traveler was your flesh. And you decided to take from others to feed your flesh. You hurt other people to satisfy your own fleshly carnal desires. Listen, when we follow our own pathway and we do our own thing, we're going to hurt other people. And we see it over and over and over again. Listen, David paid mightily for his sin of murder and adultery. I mean, an unwanted pregnancy, uh, murder of a trusted friend, uh, his child was dead, his daughter was raped by his own son, uh, one son murdered by another son, a civil war led by one of his sons, a son who really imitated David's lack of self-control, led him and much of Israel away from God. The Bible says, looking diligently, lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up trouble you, and thereby many be defiled. You don't live unto yourself. And when you decide to go rogue and to walk away from the Bible and say, I know more than God, and I'm not going to get burned, and I know this is a Bible principle, but listen, it's okay, I'll be the, I'll, I'll be the exception, not the rule then we end up hurting other people in the process. And so we need to remember, we need to remember others as we live our life. We need to think of the latter end and think of what is this going to do to my family? What is this going to do uh, to my church? What is this going to do to those around me? How is it going to impact other people? Heed the Bible. Think about others. Number three. Number three. And I'll be done. We need to strive to bring glory to God. The heart of Paul was to bring glory to God. He wrote to Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 5. As he comes to the end of his life. He knows the time is near when his life will be taken. When the life, his life will be taken. And he says, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. He, he, he says, I have fought a good fight, I have finished my course, I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. This was Paul's race. And Paul had had a, a unique ministry, a ministry that was unlike, uh, you know, your race or my race. Paul had suffered much for the cause of the, of the Lord Jesus. He had been given a preaching ministry to the Jews and, and to the Gentiles. And the Bible says that Paul came to the end of his life and said, I am now, I, he says, I fought a good fight. I've finished my course. I've kept the faith. The heart of the Apostle Paul was to bring glory to God. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 24, Know ye not that they which run in the race run all, but one receiveth the prize, so run that ye may obtain. And every man that striveth for the mastery is tempered in all things, self-control. Listen, no one runs a race to, to lose. We run our race to run all. And the Bible says, Paul says, therefore I bring my body into subjection so that I have this self-control. He says, so that when I've preached to others, I myself should, uh, I myself should be a castaway. His desire was to bring glory to God in his life. This, this was, you know, Paul's truth in which he lived each day. 
I control my emotions. I control my flesh, my carnal appetite. I do not allow them to control me. So that I can bring glory to God with my life. And there will be times in your life where the flesh will try to get the better of you. But you got to remember, Paul says, I die daily. you got to say to that old flesh, you are dead. And I am alive to live for Jesus. i got to think about the latter end. I can't go that direction. I, I can't follow that pathway. i got others that are looking at me. I, I have to be an example to those who are weaker. And we have to remember, i got to bring glory to God. Consider the latter end. Keep on running the race that is set before you. You know, I've preached many funerals of men and women that were faithful to the Lord. And it's truly a blessing to preach a funeral of someone who lived a Christian life and lived for God. Knowing that they're with the Lord and whom they served their whole life. And their sons and daughters would rise up and call them blessed. And even if they didn't agree with their life, even if they didn't agree uh, with, with how they lived, and, and some of these children maybe not even living for the Lord, and yet they had to agree that their mom or their dad was consistent and loved God. Anyone can start a race. I mean, we can all meet at the church tomorrow morning and we can run you know, a, a, a cross-country race. We can start here at the church and we can all run across to the other end of Kitchener. And we can all start. But I can guarantee you not everyone's going to finish. I probably <laughs> will not finish. <laughs> here's, here's the reality. In the Christian life, we don't want to just finish. We don't want to just start. We want to finish strong. We want to think about the latter end. When we are on our deathbed, we want to be able to say, listen, I have run my race. I have finished my course. I've kept the faith. Was I perfect? No. But I live my life to bring glory to God. And if that is going to be our testimony, then we're going to have to tell our old flesh to get lost. We're going to have to say no to those carnal cravings. We're going to have to say, get lost to the world. And we're going to have to keep our eyes on the Lord Jesus. God help us today. Heed the Bible. Remember, we affect others. And strive to bring glory to God. Let's think about the latter end. The Bible says of the false teachers, the latter end is worse than the beginning. For the Christian, God help us today. Our latter end should be better than the beginning. We should grow, we should get, become stronger, we should, walk with, we should walk with God every day. Uh, God help us today, wherever you are, God help us today to remember the end. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we're grateful for all that you've done for us. And we're thankful for your blessings. We're thankful for your word. We're thankful for the instruction that we have in our life. And I pray, Heavenly Father, that you would give us this biblical principle, just so simple as the latter end, that when we are confronted with various destinations and decisions, that we would think about others. We would heed your, war your warning in the Bible. And, and Lord, we would live our life to bring you glory. Help us, Lord, to make the right decision in our life. And we love you. We thank you for all that, you've, all that you've done for us, what you will do for us in the days ahead. Thank you for your salvation, for washing our sins away, Lord. We are eternally grateful. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to close our service with, My Jesus, I love thee. My Jesus, I love thee. I'm going to lead you in it. If you have a church hymn book, you can find it 332. If you don't have a church hymn book, that's okay. The words are going to be below. And so you can sing along at home as well. We want you to sing along. Uh, I think it's a wonderful opportunity that we have. I'll say this. Last Wednesday, I wasn't feeling well under the weather. And so I wasn't at the live stream. Brother Mar did a wonderful job. I did watch the live stream. And uh, it was a blessing to be able to see those words and to be able to sing along. I, I think it's a wonderful opportunity. So you make sure you're singing, my Jesus, I love thee. Let's sing it together on the first verse as I lead you. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee all the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my sin.
thou hast first loved me. I love thee because thou hast first loved me and purchased my pardon on Calvary's tree. I love thee for wearing my brow if ever I love thee my Jesus alright in mansions of glory we're going to sing on the last verse together here we go in mansions of glory and God bless you. I hope you'll join us on Wednesday. Brother Marr will be leading that service and preaching for us Wednesday at 7 o'clock for our live stream. I hope that you'll tune in and be a part of that. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening.